Hello, everybody, and welcome to this video of myself and Simon Bates. Hello. And today we're going to get into the difference between the straight soprano and the curved soprano. So, first up, obvious difference, you can tell. Um, the curved soprano <laughs> is curved, and it looks more like an alto, of course. Albeit, in Simon's hands, it looks like an extremely small alto. <laughs> um, but there are some differences when you play, uh, both to the player and perhaps to the actual tone that they can produce. So we've got two models that are essentially the same, and that they're both Wincraft 200 series models, but we've got the curved and obviously the straight here in a slightly different lacquer, but the model's the same. So I think probably, Simon, the best thing we can do is just have a blow on the curved and then straight away onto the straight, and then it'd be good to get some of your thoughts as a working pro as to why they differ and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So if we just go on to the straight. Now this straight model actually has two necks, a slightly curved one, which is the one we've got on there, and the straight one as well. And actually in our Wincraft 200 video, we do go over the differences there. But let's have a little listen um, just to how that might compare to this. So, from your point of view as the player, Simon, just first impressions between curves and straights generally? Well, from the player's point of view, obviously, most of the sound is kind of coming out that way, whereas with the, uh, the curved soprano, it's coming back at you, so you get more feedback. Um, the advantage of a straight soprano, of course, is, is that you get a better intonation. You haven't got the, the bend in the tube, so it's it just going straight down. Um, you do, of course, lose it, perhaps a little bit of the, uh, the brightness, uh, by having a, a slightly curved neck. Um, but of course, you, you lose a, a fair amount of the brightness um, and a lot of the stability uh, having a, a, a curve in the soprano. Having said that, a lot of people prefer it because you, you do get that feedback um, and you get a certain sound from it that you're not going to get from a, curved, uh, a straight soprano. Yeah, there's a certain sort of sweetness, not only to the look, but to the sound mm. as well. There's a sort of a warmth. I, I always think like smooth jazz kind of vibe with Curve Soprano. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do, It's yeah. got more of that kind of feel. What, less Kenny G, more um, Sammy Tom G. Scott. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's, we don't want to say certain saxophones do certain sounds. You know, mm. it's always depending on the player, all that stuff we all know. But I think if we are comparing like with like, certainly even just sat next to you hearing the comparisons, there's a sort, a little bit more mellow, a little bit warmer, mm. maybe. Whereas there's a directness, perhaps, to the straight soprano. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, but you know, yeah, that's... So the, 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 the straight soprano is perhaps a bit more serious. You know, you, you get more of a smile, I think, from a curved, curved soprano. Um, <laughs> Sorry to the curved soprano players out there. <laughs> well, no, I no, dare I say it, that's a bit more circus. But, uh, yeah. oh, no, oh I've, I've, I've upset people there. He said it. No, no. Well, <laughs> we, we do sell curved sopranos to two types of people. Actually, sometimes they're used as a first saxophone. So instead of playing an alto, if you've got a very mm -hmm. young person and they can't manage an alto, then sometimes there are student curved sopranos that you can buy or, or we rent them, for example. And it's a nice way to get someone going, a very young player, so they can get their fingers around it and everything else. Now, the tricky thing is obviously starting in B flat, which is not a major issue, but then when you switch to alto, it's E flat and it all feels a bit different and sounds a bit different. Um, or we do sell them to people who are upgrading and, but there's not as many, there's not as much choice on curved soprano when you upgrade. There's the Anagasawa, a couple of Moriats, and That's true, yeah. now we've got yeah. the Wincraft, but there isn't a huge range like there is maybe on the straight. Mm -hmm. And perhaps if we look at the market, you know, there's probably 80, 90% straight being sold versus the curve. So that, you know, there's probably something to think about there. Yeah. Um, but it is very much a case of trying them out. And for example, on this model, we have both available, so you can try them and see what you feel. And say on the Anagasawa, you can do that as well. Um, but any other thoughts, Simon, just in terms of the straight versus the curve to be aware? No, I think, I think as you say, it's very much a personal preference. Um, you know, as I've said before, I, I use the, the slightly curved neck on, on my Yamaha uh, as opposed to the straight neck. Some people prefer the straight through sound of a, of a, a, a straight soprano. Um, others prefer the, 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 the kind of the look and the, the mellowness and the, the, the kind of intimacy, I guess, of, of, uh, of a, a curved soprano. But 
you know, whichever you, you go for, um, both of these saxophones, the, the, the Wingcraft, are, are incredibly built, well built. Um, in, just for the, for the money you're going to pay, they're, they're ridiculous quality. So, um, you know, don't ignore either of them. Come in yeah. and, and, and try them both, I'd say. Absolutely. Cool. OK, well, I think maybe uh, the, the straight with the curved is quite a nice compromise then, isn't mm -hmm. it? That's another way to think about it. But OK, well, maybe give us a little bit more on the straight one just to blow us out. Don't we, don't we play that as well? Oh, yes, go for it if you want to, yes. <laughs> maybe a little here. OK. Mm -hmm. 